God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and we're going to talk about marriage once again. I am going to try my best to be persistent. I want to drop at least one marital video per week. So you guys pray for me. <laughs> I would just like to say that as soon as I started working on marriage videos, life has been lifing hard, super hard. I'm talking about issues with our health, issues with our vehicles, issues with our finances, just family. Everything had a hit, right? And it's like, Lord, be with me. Be my strength because just as my speaking and I'm encouraging not to quit, I don't want to quit either, but y'all got to understand that when people come forth and bring you messages that they go through stuff, you know, probably prior or even a little after, right? Like it's like, so you didn't shut your mouth. Someone try to hurt you where it hurts, right? And we have to be strengthened and encouraged as well. And I just want to say that through that, I know that that was an act of disobedience on my behalf, that I should have been discussing marriage and helping and, you know, providing encouragement and biblical backing for the things that goes on in a marriage. I just want to start with this though, and I should have started with this initially anyway, but it's the truth and it needs to be said in today's society that tried to make marriage, everything but glorifying God, the answer to your marriage is right here in this Bible. Don't mean to sound cliche. Don't want to rub this in your face like I'm pretty sure others have, but this is the truth. Then let me tell you, think about the things that you're able to do versus things that you're not able to do. When it comes to sin and doing what you want to do, you typically can get, get that done. But when it comes to things that you need to do, like praying, fasting, reading God's word, fellowshipping, there's a whole lot of stumbling blocks. There's a whole lot of hindrance. There's a whole lot of attacks. You have to press your way. Press your way into reading this. You can start with, um, I'll start with this. Adam and Eve are the first married couple in your Bible. Even after Eve was deceived by Satan, Adam did not go anywhere. They continued to build. They continued to grow. They continued to mature and be blessed. Yes, there was the fall of man and the issues that come with that, but you don't see any uh, passages about all hell breaking loose. You don't see any passages about divorce. You don't see any passages about them quarreling. And I would like to believe because modernly that principle still stands that we are not to just go around and say, I hate my husband. I hate my wife. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I'm unhappy. I don't think that is fruitful. Matter of fact, I know that's not fruitful. But what is fruitful is for you to come in here into your Bible. And I will even say that for those of you who have multiple Bibles, like you got a Bible to um, to utilize, like an extra Bible, I would say even get have one where you and your husband, like this is our time. Whatever we study, whatever we go through, whatever we read, whatever we meditate on, whatever we need. Um, beyond, you know, outside of church and Bible study, like our intimate time with the Lord, because that's something that doesn't get talked about either, where, you know, you have the passage that say women aren't to be making a whole bunch of noise and speaking in church, that you go home and ask your husband quietly, but how many of us actually take time to ask our husband? And you know what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, that is awesome. There are women who... Uh, uh, assume because nothing's definitely written in stone unto death that their husband isn't qualified to be asked questions. 
a lot of women assume that their husband doesn't have the knowledge they have and that they are more knowledgeable in the Bible, so they don't go to them. A lot of women just jump right into, you know, their own study and their own personal time, and they have excluded their husband. This is not the plan and will of God. And to be honest, I would say that it's rude. It is rude for you to think about yourself, selfish, and not think about your husband who you have you have made aware and knowledgeable in your mind and your heart that you are stronger in these areas, but you're not helping him. A lot of women go on to do Bible studies, um, women's groups, prayer groups, YouTube channels, and they have not turned to the husband to help him. It's like we have this thing in us that, and it's vice versa, that it's like when a stranger comes along, we're more eager to help and support and to push for them than we are the people in our own home. A lot of us have children, children who are struggling in faith. We have children who don't understand, who don't have a prayer life, who don't have a strong reading habit. Uh, we have children who are just aren't disciplined in the Lord, whether young or older. And guess what? We put all this energy into ourselves instead of them. What did you think God gave us children just to raise them in the natural sense and not in the spiritual sense? Do you think you just so happen to be more disciplined in reading God's word and studying and praying and you just have that not to share or to include your husband? We have to be careful. Um, a lot of things I've seen and I have been attest to it myself is that oftentimes when our husband is lacking in something, we are eager to let them know, but we're not as eager to provide the solution. And you'll be surprised what intimate time with the Lord would do with your marriage. It could be something as simple. And guess what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ask. Ask. You've asked God, but then you've gone about your business and you have not put forth any effort. There's a reason why we had to bring James. Thank you. Thank you, God. Because faith without works is dead. And we need to understand that, that we can sit there and pray and twirl our fingers all day long and ask God, please strengthen his reading habits, his prayer life, um, his knowledge. When we have these tools and we have these gifts and we're not sharing and we're not including. And that is rude. That is disrespectful. That is dishonoring to God because you have these gifts to share. Like we have the concept idea that we should fellowship with one another in the body of Christ, but we often exclude the very individuals in our home and this husband and wife, but obviously I'm talking to majority women. So going into this year, let's make habits of including instead of excluding. And that includes children, cousins, mom. Um, you would be surprised with a simple, hey, could you read with me right quick? And obviously within re in reason, like you don't interrupt football, you know, and say, hey, can you come read with me? Because you understand that importance to him. And it will probably be more harder to communicate that, hey, this is more important at that time. Everybody has to start somewhere, right? So maybe, um, I don't know, sitting at dinner. Um, maybe you guys aren't really talky talky. How about per, uh, play scriptures while you guys are reading, um, eating? Or um, what about in the car? You know, um, we can always sacrifice the music part because our true worship, our pure worship is in these, in our feet, in our mouths. That's our true worship. So we can turn the radio off. We don't have to listen to gospel music 24, 7, 365. How about substitute that for audio Bible? Or um, I think, well, at one point in time, God knows we got slack. <laughs> We will um, pray in the morning together or pray at night together. Our children say that um, our father prayer together. And I look at that as more than uh, you guys are just praying the Lord's prayer. You're spending intimate time with God and each other. The purest form of fellowship. Like we ain't, we're not excluding God because that happens a lot. You know, you get a lot of these. Uh, Bible studies and groups and they end up turning to like a self, self help evaluation or a worldly new age thing. That's not what God intended that to be. We come together for growth, for maturity in the Lord, for 
wisdom sharing, gift sharing, um, gift strengthening. These is the reasons why we come together as one. So I challenge you, whoever you is, it's probably 10 of you, 20 of you, to instead of complaining, instead of boasting on yourself, instead of being prideful and arrogant that, hey, I can do this with my eyes closed. Because a lot of us women can, let's be real. We tend to grasp the intimate side of quiet time more so than a lot of men. And then also, we cannot be too quick to judge a situation like, well, it looks like to me he doesn't spend time with the Lord because we don't know what he does outside of you. And we don't know what's going on in his mind and his heart. But we can seek ways to actively be involved together. So again, the answer to your marital issues is this. Sit down, read, pray, meditate on scriptures. And I don't mean, you don't have to be uniform with this. Don't just say, well, I'm going to get him to read these marital um, scriptures. Like, come on, let's not be, don't use God's time to be petty. And not to say that the marital scriptures are petty, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, well, he got a problem loving me like Christ loved church. So let's just read these passages. Let's not do that. Let's keep it cordial. Let's keep it polite. Let's keep it kind. What about the scripture that pierced your heart? Or what about something that would actually benefit and be meaningful to him and not seem like a dig at his character? You know, think about that or be random. Do something spontaneous. And say, hey, we got a jar. Get pieces of paper or sticky notes and fold them up and put different books of the Bible in there and say, hey, let's just pick one. And then we read it together. And you will be surprised what that will do for you and your marriage and your household, your kids being an example, your family. Take a moment to come up with some ideas for your marriage. Fight for your marriage. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.